from deep in the heart of Texas, Life Talk. Here's your host, Mark Crutcher. Welcome to Life Talk for February 2011. I'm Mark Crutcher, and lurking in the shadows are Cherie Johnson, Johnny Hunter, and Troy Newman. As always, Father Frank and Janet Morana will be along later. But first up is Alan Ackles with Life Talk News. Alan? All right, thank you, Mark. A Tennessee university that required nursing students to participate in abortions has changed that policy after two unnamed students filed a complaint with the Department of Health and Human Services. According to the Alliance Defense Fund, which represented the two students, Vanderbilt University's application still includes a statement that abortion procedures are part of the program, but it also informs applicants that accommodations can be made for those who do not want to assist with such procedures. In Wisconsin, a pro-lifer who was arrested as he took video outside a local abortion facility has pleaded not guilty. Tom Brecka, president and chief counsel of the Chicago-based Thomas More Society, is representing James Marku, who was charged with disorderly conduct after two clinic escorts claimed he got in their way. According to Mark, who, while he was recording the pro-life presence on the public sidewalk outside the affiliated Women's Abortion Center in Milwaukee, one of the clinic escorts attempted to block his view. Mark, who says that as he went to step around the clinic escort, the escort suddenly lurched to the side, bumping Mark, who, into the brick wall of the building. According to witnesses, when the police arrived, they interviewed the escorts inside the clinic, but did not ask any of the pro-lifers for their side of the story. In an update to a previous Live Talk story, a recent legal ruling has opened up free speech in front of an Alabama abortion clinic. For over 10 years, a federal court injunction against a small group of activists has been used, uh, had been used by the All Women's Health Center in Birmingham and the Birmingham police to force pro-lifers onto a distant sidewalk and make their offers to help women entering the death camp ineffective. As Life Talk reported previously, pro-life attorneys filed a motion to dismiss the clinic's injunction on the grounds that it was being enforced against individuals who were not defendants in the original court case. In a victory for pro-lifers, Judge Ed Ramsey agreed with uh, that claim and dismissed the lawsuit. What in Alaska, a pro-choice man has been charged with the attempted murder of an unborn child after he allegedly tried to make his wife miscarry. The victim says that 21-year-old Oren A. Green punched her in the abdomen and threw her to the floor while she was discussing the pregnancy with him. According to court documents, Green proceeded to press, squeeze, and twist his wife's abdomen in an attempt to end her pregnancy. Green now faces up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Well, this ongoing epidemic of pro-choice violence was also seen in Nevada, where a 33-year-old man who forced uh, his girlfriend to have an abortion has been charged with 13 counts of child abuse. Edward Colucci is accused of, be of uh, beating and starving the woman's 8-year-old and 4-year-old boys while threatening to kill her if she went to police. According to the arrest report, when the woman told Colucci she was pregnant with her third child, Colucci threatened to kill one of her children if she did not have an abortion. She eventually complied out of fear. Colucci has now been charged with kidnapping, assault, and child abuse, and the children have been placed in protective custody. In Lincoln Heights, Ohio, a local firefighter has been arrested for having sex with a minor and then giving her money for an abortion. Court documents state that 26-year-old Leando Banks admitted to having sex with a 15-year-old, then giving her $300 for an abortion because he thought she was pregnant with a child. The girl's mother said that she had brought her suspicions about the predator to the city manager who told her that there was nothing he could do and advised her to get a lawyer. Well, two weeks later, police officers responded to the woman's home for an unrelated disturbance. Police then arrested Banks after the mother told him, uh, told them what had been going on between her daughter and the firefighter. And in Texas, a Corpus Christi Planned Parenthood has dropped its affiliation after the national office ordered them to start doing abortions. Amanda Stukenberg, CEO of Planned Parenthood of South Texas, said her office took the action after Planned Parenthood Federation of America instituted a mandate that all its members perform abortions. Lisa David, Senior Vice President of Health Services Support for Planned Parenthood, said that the nation's most profitable abortion provider has called for a, quote, unified set of core preventative services, unquote. Under this new directive, at least one Planned Parenthood facility within each affiliated county will be required to offer abortions. And finally, in the continuing trend of abortion clinic closures, Planned Parenthood of Greater Northern New Jersey has closed the Dover Health Center. Planned Parenthood blamed the closing on state budget cuts for family planning services that resulted in a $1.2 million loss to Planned Parenthood. 
This comes as Indiana Congressman Mike Pence has introduced legislation that would prevent any federal tax dollars from going to Planned Parenthood or any other organization that performs abortions. The bill is gaining support in the House and has 122 co-sponsors. In explaining his motivation for taking this action, Pence said that it is not only morally wrong to end an unborn human life by abortion, but it is also morally wrong to take money from pro-life Americans and then use it to promote abortion. It is widely anticipated that Pence will be a Republican candidate for president in 2012. I'm Alan Ackles for Life Talk News. You can get daily news updates by logging on to ProLifeAmerica.com. Mark, back to you. Thanks, Alan. Well, we got a, a lot of things happening today, and I want to um, issue a warning to the to the audience out there. This is probably not a show that um, we got a lot of subjects to talk about today that you may not want to have your children around for. So. Um, I would encourage you maybe to, to uh, take some discretion there. Um, don't even like to talk about some of the things we have to talk about today, but people, have to, know, huh? people have to know what's going on. First thing, Troy and uh, Cherie and Johnny, let's talk about this guy, Gosnell in Pennsylvania, um, mm -hmm. who's been arrested, an abortionist there, who people have been in the pro-life movement been warning the authorities about for 20 years, mm -hmm. and they're not doing anything. Now he's been arrested and charged with eight counts of murder, and the even the secular news is saying the place he was running is just a toilet, which it was, if you've seen any of the is video. Pencil, uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Um, he's been charged with killing a one of his patients, and uh, then also with seven counts of murder for babies that were, he induced the woman to have the baby instead of aborting the baby. Mm -hmm induced the woman to have the baby, and then he was doing what's called snipping, which he takes a pair of industrial scissors or whatever and cuts the umbilical cord on the back of the baby's neck to kill him. The baby's outside the womb and alive. And uh, they found a lot of these babies stuffed in closets, stuffed in plastic bags in the refrigerator, in jars, and he's been charged. Um, you know, Mark, as horrible as this is, mm -hmm. and it is. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the gruesome details are coming out into the news, and you'd actually have to be living under a rock not to hear some of this stuff, even in the secular media. But it's some of the same things that we have reported on, on the show, we've talked about, we've, we've seen firsthand. The, in fact, the former abortion clinic that our office is in experienced right. a lot of the same exact complaints. Well, we came up there and did the video. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing I think it, it, that needs to be said about this is there's a, there's a ton of hypocrisy around this issue. The media is out here going, oh, this is horrible. He's killing these little babies outside the women and everything. And even some pro-lifers have, have made, seen, this, seen this as more horrible than the normal abortion. It's not. it's not. And this is the thing that makes me so angry, is that had he cut the spinal cords of these little babies while they were still in the womb, be okay. it'd be a choice. Mm -hmm. Right? Nobody's complaining about the first trimester abortions that rip them to pieces. That's the same. It's just one. as horrible well, everywhere, state to state, every state. We're, what we're talking about here is location. Mm -hmm. And and again, in a bizarre kind of way, you could say this guy's at least intellectually honest compared to other pro-aborts. He's not seeing any distinction between killing them in the womb and killing them out. For him, it's easier to kill them outside the womb. He can deal with them easier. And so he's intellectually honest. It's actually one of the safest procedures when you think about it. When you're talking about safe for who? Safe for the mother. Right. It's a, it's the safest abortions because you're not putting sharp instruments into the womb at, that are oftentimes very very destructive. Right. And he had a list of I think 41 different malpractice lawsuits yep. where he's perfor perforated uteruses, perforated bowels, perforated cervixes, uh, sent oh. women to the hospital on numerous occasions. At least two women have died at the hands of this guy. Why is he getting charged with murder, though? That's the point of the women going yeah, there is to right. get their chi children murdered. He's getting the job done. What's the, what are they, you know, what's the problem? That's my argument. My, my hope in all of this is finally going after somebody. Yeah. That, that's, my, that's my hope in it. And I hope he's just a tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. I hope they get nabbed every abortionist out there. And the thing that, that really, uh, and what makes me really happy about it is because this brother was a black guy. So which means he wasn't no brother at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so you, regardless of what a person's race is, this shows you that abortionists 
are bad, mean, nasty folks, well, see, and they need to be put in prison. Yes, Johnny. and don't forget where he put, he separated the black patients from the white patients because he said the black folks don't complain like the white he folks do. Yeah, they, they're saying that in, in his mm -hmm. facility, he had nicer facilities for the white patients than the black ones because the black ones don't complain. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like the drug dealers out on the street. You go into a black neighborhood, you see black guys out there doing <coughs> drugs, you know. Now, the kind of drugs they sell to the black community, believe it or not, really is different from the black and the drugs they sell to the white community. And, and I think this, the thing I love about this, though, I hope this guy goes to jail, if not worse. They're talking about seeking the death penalty on him. Well, 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 see, now, now it's a wake-up call. I, I am seeing hope that they actually went after somebody. See, that's, that's the good news. Remember, Bruce Deere killed Sharon Hamplin. He got three, four months uh, for manslaughter. Rapine Austin Hall, we reported about him a couple months ago. He got three months in jail, nine months in uh, kind of house arrest, paid two million bucks. And now this guy is being charged with murder. And not, not just murder. I, I mean, like racketeering charges, corrupt organization charges, illegal distribution of drugs, and not just the abortionist, but the abortionist's wife the other medical workers that were doing abortions that didn't have licenses, they're all being charged with murder. Yeah. So and this is an advance. Right. And after 38 years, we should be excited that the things that we've been saying, shouting from the mountaintops, putting out press releases, holding signs, are now being reported by the lamestream media. And I'm hope. well, you know, look, Carhartt's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tiller, was. Tiller, was. Tiller was doing the exact same thing. Andrew Rutland in California is doing the exact same thing. We're dealing with some issues down here in Texas that are doing the exact same thing. Right. I'm hoping that this is, you know, one of the big first nails in the coffin of Roe versus Wade. I hope so you know the, I hope so. the the problem that we're we're already seeing, of course, the 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 so-called mainstream, left stream, godless media in this country, they're circling the wagons around this guy, and they're trying to make this seem like, oh well, he's just the bad apple. This no, this is the way the abortion industry operates. And, and people think, oh, you're nuts. They don't all operate this way. I guarantee you, if you work in most of these abortion clinics, we, you and I have talked to millions of these employees that come out of these places. We all have. Mm -hmm. And they all have these same kind of stories about things that go on. For some reason, this district attorney in, in uh, Philadelphia that's going after this guy, who happens to be black, by the way, that's another uh, neat aspect of this story, because, because this abortionist is black, there'd be people out there raising the specter sure. if this was a white district attorney saying, Oh, he's, he's just going after he's him because he's, he, you know, but this guy is black and he is hot for this deal. And he's doing a great yeah. job and he's to be commended for it. But the fact is that this is, this is business as usual. Mm -hmm. and every day. Every day, all over this country. Over. And, you know, we keep talking about women being sexually abused and sexually assaulted in abortion clinics. And in my book, Line 5, there's a whole chapter on that. And that was just the tip of the iceberg as far as what we found. In this case, they found out now this guy's been taking pictures of these women at the abortion clinic. Um, and in compromising poses and so forth. And you know what and else? The, and the pro aborts and the pro, the pro abortion women are defending him. Defending this guy. Oh, they're yeah. defending him. And yeah, they want to run from this. But here's another thing that I, I, that I want to bring out about this case. At the very end of this 300 page grand jury indictment presentation, there was what was really more of an indictment against the entire uh, state officials, all the state officials that have been regulating this place. And what it said was, since Bob Casey left office in, as governor of the state of Pennsylvania, there was a systematic, uh, destructive force that came in with pro-abortion policies that overlooked the safety that they were supposed to be presenting and, and guarding, safety of women that they were supposed to be guarding for their pro-abortion policies. They put their abortion politics above principle. And that's how this place just caved into the to where it was today, or where it, it happened but, to sit. But we've seen this all over the country. We saw it in Arizona well, well, with Bar point. Brian Finkel. Well, we saw it in Arizona. We see it in okay. Iowa. We see it in Nebraska. We see it in California. We see it here in Texas. We saw it in Kansas. Uh, the head of the medical board, Larry Buing, covered for George Tiller's abuses, which were exactly like the the, right. the issues that we're talking about with Gosnell having. Well, you know, so I say a safe legal route doesn't really mean that, huh? Well, this is an indictment against the medical boards and the licensing agencies and the health departments around the country, and that's what this indictment said, yeah. that these guys need to start examining themselves and stop putting their pro-abortion politics over principle. And don't let for a moment anybody think that it's worse in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. than it is anywhere else. It's, this is the, there is, we've said it before, and I'll say it again, there's no right way to do a wrong thing. Mm -hmm. You, you cannot have a clean, well-run professional abortion industry because by its nature, it, it's like having 
it's like saying we're going to have a clean, well-run porn industry or prostitution. By its nature, it'll never be that way. And, and this is a good example of it. But it just makes me so angry that, that people out there, and especially in the media, are trying to portray this as a, oh, this is, this is one of those lone kind of one, one of kind of situations and he's just the bad apple and, mm-hmm. and most of them are professional, well-run, you know, medical facilities. This nonsense. Yeah. This is the norm. Well, and the, and the notes and the emails that I'm seeing from the abortion side, they are reeling. This is a black, in the, a black eye uh, of the abortion industry, and they don't want to talk about it. But look, when, when one lone kook does something on the pro-life side, or oh, they, we think it's the pro-life, everybody is painted with the broad brush. Right. Well, now we've got the bodies. Right. We've got mm-hmm. Tiller, we've got Carhartt, we've got Bruce Steer, we've got Rappin, we've got Gosnell and his whole crew. We've got David Hamilton, we've got Brian Finkel, all these abortionists that are dirty. I say this is the norm of the abortion industry. It is the industry. norm. Well, well, I tell you what, last week we, I, I attended a, a Virginia rally for life because in Virginia they are now really pushing for the regulation of abortion facilities. Mm-hmm. And even the abortion industry admit that if a regulation comes through, nine of them will have to shut that's down. Right. Now that's and the I'm AG telling, Cusinelli? Yeah, and, and, I, and I'm telling people... My goodness, they regulate bottle shops, beauty <laughs> shops. And that's a 21 page in the state of Virginia, 21 pages of regulations for a barber shop. In other words, they got to make sure the hair is swept off the floor, the scissors are well, clean and sterilized. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, which is more important? A uh, clean hair off the floor, a splatter of blood set on the floor? You know, are you going, are you going to talk about uh, uh, sterilized scissors is more important than whatever these abortions sterilized are using? Cannulas? Yeah. Where, where we catch these Not abortion clinics reusing cannulas from one woman to the next? Yeah. Right. It's unbelievable. But anyway, uh, I'm hoping, like, like you're saying, maybe this is the prick in the water balloon. Um, but, you know, we thought that with Brian Finkel and we've thought it with others too. So we, we have to kind of temper it that. It is. It's just moving slower than we'd hope for. Right. Yeah. And we're and, working and, for And what you call it, the lamestream media. Yeah. And uh, I noticed even on one of the biggest national papers, they put this way back on one of them little pages, oh, yeah. just a little, little thing. And I, and I remember, Troy, you looking at this, this guy's a serial killer. Yeah. And they got just a little, teeny but little if collar about it. That person would have bumped into somebody, like somebody oh, said, it'd be front page. If you had news. an 80 year old nun re, uh, uh, praying the rosary and she yeah. stepped one inch it'd onto be all over the front page. it'd be on front page. Well, how right. many people were killed in Arizona by that Six. gunman? Six. This man killed eight people. Right. He gets this much. Right. Eight people that they know, I mean, that, that, they're, they know that they're charging oh, the him The district with. attorney said he has been doing this for a long time, mm-hmm. and the only reason they can't charge him for more is because he destroyed medical records. Mm-hmm. So. And it's, yeah. Anyway. You're safe, illegal abortions at work. Abortion we've got so many things that we're not going to be able to get to today. I want to go over a couple of things here. Um, the Republican Party has thrown out Steele and replaced him with a guy named Rents Priebus. Mm-hmm. And apparently, Mr. Priebus is truly committed to the pro-life cause. He seems to be a really good guy, and, you know, time will tell. We've been betrayed in the past, of course, mm-hmm. but, but at least on the surface, he, he seems like a really good guy. In other words, he would ac- accurately represent his constituents. Right. Okay. And uh, Mitch Daniels, of course, from Indiana, the governor there who told, told us all a few months ago that we need to put abortion and other social issues on the back burner, he says he's got no, rec- re- no regrets over that. I'm hoping that's the end of his political career. Yeah. Um, let me, in can and, and, oh, and stuff we're never going to get to. Oh, by the way, we talked last month about, um, the situation in Phoenix where the, uh, hospital was, uh, Catholic, Catholic hospital, hospital Olmstead. yeah, was, and now Bishop Olmstead has, um, stripped them of their Catholic status. So we've got us a hero there in, in Bishop Olmstead. He is a hero, too. Yeah, he is, and we've talked I mean, about him before. Huh? <coughs> he came from Wichita. Huh? He came from Wichita. Really? Yeah. I would have figured he came from Texas, didn't you? <laughs> 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 Those kind of people almost always come from Texas. from Texas. But uh, we claim him, nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, he has stripped them of their Catholic identity. Now, one thing that's interesting is um, we talked here before about Sister Carol Keehan, which gave, who she gave uh, cover to the Obama administration from the Catholic so-called position on health care and worked for it. She has now been named by the National Catholic Reporter, not the National Catholic Register, but the National Catholic Reporter as their first annual person of the year. Oh my, oh my, oh my. In other words, go against what your church teaching. Yeah. You're a hero. You're a hero. To someone who claims to be the Catholic press. 
It's it's wow. unbelievable. I'm, I'm surprised that sister's not worried about her own soul. <laughs> she <laughs> apparently doesn't have no sense to be worried about that. Uh, you know, it's the only thing I can figure. Um, one other thing, too, we're just about out of time here. Uh, we've got lots of stuff we didn't get to. Um, one other thing, Planned Parenthood is starting a new, a new deal where they're going to start having sexual assault examination facilities at Planned Parenthood clinics. Mm. And you say, well, that seems like a good deal. Put counselors in there for women who are victims mm -hmm. of sexual assault. I wonder what those counselors are going to be told to sell in those mm -hmm. sexual assault situations to women who might turn out to be pregnant. Morning after pill. Uh, abortions. Abortions. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So you have to always be uh, suspicious of organizations like Planned Parenthood when they have mm -hmm. a vested interest in doing this kind of counseling. They thrive off the misery of others. That's yes, right. they do. You that's, know, and, that's their profit. And they're predators, as you so aptly put oftentimes, Mark, and, and to predate upon a woman or a child that has uh, been abused at that moment in crisis is really despicable. A couple of things going on in China, and I know it's, it's not the United States, but we keep saying, and, I, and I've made this point it before. <laughs> it, yeah, it almost is. They, they sell us everything we own, but um, everything that's ever happened in China on the abortion issue has eventually happened in the United States. All the things we look over there and say, oh, we'd never do that, go down 10 years down the road and you'll find out that we're doing the same thing. Um, China has now... Uh, converted an entire village, a whole village, a whole city, into a prison simply to keep one guy, uh, Chen Gukachang, who's a blind pro-lifer. They have turned his city into a prison so that he cannot leave and go talk to other people about the pro-life message. Wow. Yeah. Here was an wow. article in Marie Claire. I don't read Marie Claire, as you might imagine, but... But um, they, so, uh, somebody sent me this article, uh, and I, I wanted to go into it in more depth, but we're out of time. Um, China's one-child policy. Mm -hmm. They discovered this, that this woman had had more than one child. She had had her second child. And they, wanted, they asked her to be sterilized. They demanded that she get sterilized. She's refusing. So they have put her brother-in-law, her husband brother, in prison mm -hmm. until she agrees to be sterilized. And now we're busy entertaining the China yeah. leaders mm -hmm. as if they are our friends. Uh -huh. Yep, it's amazing. Oh, my One, my like gosh. I said, we can't get to much of this other stuff. Can, a Kentucky judge has granted permission for minors from the out of state to go through the judicial bypass system in Kentucky. Mm. No, say that again. Cross state lines. Oh. Minors from other states uh -huh. can go to Kentucky and go through their judicial bypass system to avoid parental notification now, on abortion. Is this something that the legislature did? No, a state judge. State judge just said that. State so judge they can cross just said state that. Lines. I think we need to impeach that judge. Uh -huh. They can cross state lines as a minor. They could take your 13-year-old daughter. Jefferson County District State Judge David Bowles, B-O-W-L-E-S. And this goes back to what I've said about our judicial system. We've got judges putting people in prison who are more guilty than the people they're putting in prison. This guy ought to be in jail. Mm -hmm. This guy ought to be in jail. Um, the list goes on and on. Uh, one real quick, I've got to tell you this, it's almost funny. Oh, no. In Denver, some pro-lifers there were protesting an abortion mill. They get there and there's some frost. They're, the pro-aborts pro have put up a um, plastic sheet so on, on their fence so the pro-lifers can't talk to people right. going inside. Sheet, we call them the sheets of shame. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's some frost on this sheet. And somebody, a pro-lifer goes in there, and you know how you can write on the frost, mm -hmm. you know, m and make a sign? Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. They put on here, Mommy, let me live, and stop killing kids. Yeah. The, the abortionist called them for destruction of pro public property, and the police came, 10 police.